Well, on Centrica, it's very much at the heart of our business model. Um, we have a clear investment strategy which is aimed at continuing our leadership in this field. Indeed, post-nuclear, uh, our investment that we're currently making, we believe we will have the lowest carbon intensity in the industry, about 275 grams per kilowatt hour. From a sourcing point of view, we're focused on low carbon sourcing and sustainability. We are no longer simply, I think, a supplier of the commodity. The customer interest in a carbon-friendly experience means that they look to us for advice and guidance on how to improve their own carbon footprint, how to use energy more efficiently, and we're providing that. I think looking forward over the next two or three years, we're likely to create some 3,000 green jobs which are responding to our customers' need and requirements to run their homes more energy efficiently and effectively. I think looking at Cadbury, there is a program throughout the organisation worldwide which seeks to be a comprehensive initiative which sets absolute carbon reduction targets and looks into improvements in areas such as packaging as well as water reduction. In energy, Cadbury are looking for a 50% reduction in absolute carbon emission. And we're making quite good progress towards that end at the moment. In packaging, we're looking for a 10% reduction in standard product packaging and a target of 25% for our seasonal and gift ranges. And that's being implemented by a team of experts working with our suppliers to ensure that we can deliver a product which is both attractive to the customer as well as environmentally efficient and effective in the way we have reduced our packaging content. I think Cadbury is a very strong advocate of this commitment, not only within the organisation, but it's to its suppliers, its customers, to ensure that the total commitment is understood totally by everyone involved with the business. I would say the barriers are really fourfold. Uh, the first is really just a global barrier where everyone has to accept worldwide the importance of this mission. I think in that context there is no doubt that Europe and more recently the USA have combined to set a standard. And when we look forward it is a standard to which the emerging markets are encouraged to commit. I think realistically, to have people commit from the emerging world, we have to show some real performance improvement. We have a good target, uh, a challenging target, but an admirable target to achieve by 2050, which is an 80% reduction. I think what we need is milestones on the way so that we can see important achievements against which the world can benchmark its own performance. When we look to the future, politics, wherever you are in the world, is equally important. It is essential that we have a policy that is understood by all, that is committed to by all, and most importantly, is something that is sustained so that business and consumer can understand exactly what the opportunities are and what the commitments of governments are to ensure those opportunities are liberated.